Welcome to the course on uh, Scalable Data Science. Uh, today's lecture is on uh, streaming models, on, on the streaming model and on the problem of counting distinct elements. Uh, my name is uh, Anirban and I'm a faculty of Computer Science and Engineering at IIT Gandhinagar. So, all of you have, uh, must have heard the phrase big data or large data, which is what this course is all about, of course. Uh, and I don't need to convince you the data is massive, it's growing faster than our ability to store or even index, right? In fact, without throwing any other numbers of it uh, at you, uh, the predicted rate of growth of data given by Forbes is at 1.7 MB per person per second, right? And uh, this will create, and this creates zettabytes of data in about uh, a number, a few hours or few seconds even, right? Uh, some of the more astonishing and very useful data sources uh, that we really need to analyze and uh, because we have spent millions and billions of dollars in creating this data are for instance the, the large the data coming out of the large hadron collider or the data uh, coming out of the gravitational wave detectors or the data that are going to come out of, of, of the of personalized genome sequences right imagine if we could sequence the genome of every single individual uh, in the in the planet how much data would that be and we really need to uh, be able to analyze this data at the speed that it's coming, right? And this uh, I've, uh, is typically termed as a problem of uh, handling the combination of velocity and volume, that a large amount of data is coming at us at a tremendous high velocity. And uh, we have no option but to try to process it without explicitly storing it in memory, right? So imagine you are a network switch designer. Right? And uh, as, a, as a designer, you have to answer simple questions like this. Which IPs have the most packets passing through this switch? Right? Has the traffic pattern changed overnight, dramatically? Because the answer to these questions might give you indication of whether there's a denial of, defend, uh, denial of service attack that is happening by exploiting the mechanism through your switch. Right? And you had better be able to sort of uh, answer these questions uh, fairly accurately, right? Without having to sort of store the entire data in a in, in some in some offline cloud and then and then doing some um, I mean uh, processing on it and so on, right? Because that takes way too much time. And as a network switch person, uh, you don't even have access to that much memory. It 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 could potentially be in megabytes or even smaller than that. So what do we do? We have to give up on, on, on trying to give an exact answer. This is the first thing that we do. We have to try to, uh, and uh, we have to rely on only trying to deal with approximations. That is, we'll try to return answers that are close enough to truth. And we'll also try to be correct only with high probability. We, we've already seen instances of this, like in the Bloom filter, whereby giving up on the, uh, on the on the fact that we had to return an, a correct answer always, we saved quite a bit on the space, okay? We went from something like n log u to n space, n bits in the Bloom filter. So here, again, that's the, that's the strategy that, uh, that we'll take, that we'll return approximate answers and we'll be okay with returning wrong answers sometimes. So data is assumed to come as a stream of values. For instance, it could be the bytes when reading of a tape drive. Or it could also be the destination IPs that are seen by network switch, right? So the size of the universe is assumed to be much large compared to the available memory. Typically what we say, say that, uh, okay, if the, if the available, if the size of the universe is u, then the available memory is at most polylog of u. Not much more than that. We also restrict the algorithm so that it makes a limited number of passes over the data. And uh, at best, I mean, we'd really like it to make only one pass. And in, in, in certain settings, that's all you can do. For instance, if it's a network switch, right, the data is just flowing by you. If it's gone, it's gone, right? And whatever you have to calculate, you have to calculate only in one pass over the data. In certain other cases, for instance, if the data is really in a, in a tape drive somewhere, you can potentially make a small number of passes over it. It's expensive, but you can still do it, right? So 
what we want to do is that we will create a summary data structure. Okay? Let us call it a sketch, although as we will sort of refine it later, a sketch has certain, I mean a sketch is little more formally defined than what we are sort of talking about here, but let us call it a sketch. Uh, so, we will create these sketches out of the data and we will use these sketches to try to answer the queries at the end. Okay? So, so, the question is how do we design these sketches for non-trivial questions and here is a very simple looking question first. The problem is that of estimating the number of distinct elements that we have seen. Okay? So, what is this? Let us formally define it. Suppose the element, suppose the universe is u, the number of distinct elements that you have seen is n. Okay? This n is smaller than u, of course, it could be potentially much smaller, and the stream size is m, right, which is bigger than n. So, what does it mean? It means that the same element could potentially appear multiple times. For instance, you see here the list of IPs, this 21.10, maybe this particular IP has appeared here again, and then there is some other IP and so on, right. So, the same, and, and maybe this IP could come back here later, and maybe here later, and so on. Maybe this IP could come back somewhere here later, and so on, okay. So, remember that we cannot really assume anything about the, the order in which this data comes, right because if it is a network switch the IPs that uh, IP traffic is coming in any particular order. Okay? And we want to estimate the number of distinct elements that we have seen. So, what do we do? Right? Uh, so, before saying what we do let us see let us see a, a couple of applications. As we saw the so the network switch is one example here is another very common example. Uh, suppose you are analyzing a document corpus right and and when you are doing modeling of this of this of this document corpus sometimes you need to create what are known as this k grams which are essentially k i mean uh, bytes of you take k consecutive bytes that have appeared in your in your text data right and you create a k gram out of it right and the stream is generated by this by this document corpus that you are reading so this document corpus is huge and and you are reading it and you are sort of creating this k grams uh, as you as you sort of pass by and uh, in order to create your uh, maybe your topic model or your natural language model, you need the number of distinct k grams that, uh, that you have seen in the corpus or at least some estimate of that. Right? And, uh, and remember that the number of distinct k grams, the potential number of distinct k grams could be the universe is huge, right? because uh, there are I mean let us say there are 256 uh, bytes and each of them and you are taking a value of k, so it is 256 to the power k which is huge even for small values of k. Similarly, if you are analyzing let us say telephone call records as in who, who called whom right? and uh, Vodafone could want to see okay, what are the number of telephone calls that may, uh, what are the number of phones that made at least one call in this month. Right? And, and, and then uh, from this tuple, from, this, from, the, from the stream of these tuples, you now, you now want to see that okay, I look at only the first element of the tuple. And I want to see how many uh, how many phone numbers, distinct phone numbers, appear as caller in at least one of the records. Okay. So again, before we look at anything smarter, we'll try to look at what are the naive solutions. The first naive solution is what we know, or I mean, what we already have done and can immediately think about. It is that you store all the elements, you sort it. And then you count the number of distinct elements. Okay? Uh, so, how much space does this take? This takes a lot of space because in order to store all the, the store one element, you need log u bytes, I mean log u bits, and to store n of them, you, you need n times log u bits. Right? So, therefore, you need that much n times log u space if you are doing a sorting and then a counting. It is not very hard to see that and we have already seen this that uh, I mean if you store a hash map instead right? and then okay, you do not sort, but you are you are keeping a hash map and then and then you for every new element that comes first you check whether this element is already there in the hash map. right? If it is not then you insert it in the hash map and increment the counter and if it is there then you throw away this element. Here you do not explicitly need sorting, so it might be better 
you might think that it's a better algorithm, but unfortunately not in terms of the space that you have that, that you need. Even this needs n log u space. The bit array solution that we saw before, right? Although for a slightly different problem, the same solution, a similar solution, works here. Uh, you could use a bit array of size uh, of size u, and you initialize one only if the only if the element is seen in the stream. This needs order u space. Okay. So can we do it in much less space than this? Unfortunately, no. It's possible to show using uh, information theoretic arguments that if you need an exact solution, if you need an exact solution, even if you allow for randomness, you cannot do much better than this. However, if you allow this combination of the, of the two, uh, an approximate solution as well as randomness, that is the, 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 the possibility of making errors sometimes, then suddenly magic happens. Right? What happens is that you get a much better solution in much, much less space. And we'll call this kind of solutions, so these will be a common category of solutions that we see. And we'll call these to be epsilon delta approximations. Right? So what is an epsilon delta approximation? So here is how it will typically look at. That suppose the, 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 true, the true solution is, is n. Suppose the true solution is n, which is the actual number of distinct counts. Suppose the algorithm is returning some n hat. Okay? The algorithm is returning some n hat. And an epsilon, we call it an epsilon delta approximation if it satisfies the property that the estimate n hat lies within 1 minus epsilon of n and 1 plus epsilon of n with probability 1 minus delta. Okay? So, with probability 1 minus delta, we can say that the solution that I have returned is within a 1 minus epsilon, 1 plus epsilon multiplicative factor of the original solution. Okay? And, uh, uh, and so, what is this probability over? This probability is over the randomness of the algorithm. In our specific case, in the case of the distinct counts, the randomness will be the choice of the random hash functions. So, the probability will be over the choice of the random hash functions. Okay. So, again, before we do anything complicated, let us try something simple. Uh, Let us look at this case, setting that uh, the, the stream that the universe size is n, the stream length is m and m is much bigger than n. Uh, so, do remember that we are using m here for the length of the stream because in our previous lectures, we have uh, used it as the, as the size of the memory or the size of the data set. So, we have changed notations here just to, just to caution you. Uh, the proposed, here is a proposed algorithm. A proposed algorithm is that uh, suppose you are given a, a space limit of s, right? that you can store only store s items. What can we do? Let us sample s, s items from the stream. Right? Let us sample s positions from the stream. That maybe if the stream is something like uh, if the stream is something like okay, a1, a2, a n, a, a m, we let us say sample the position 1, we sample position 2, we sample position 3, and we sample position m. Right? So we have sampled m positions. Let us find out the number of distinct elements in this set. So maybe a1 is really the element 1, a2, uh, a m minus 1 is also the element 1, a2 is element 2, and a m is element 2. So, the number of distinct elements in hat here is 2. Right? And then what I am proposing is that you return in hat times m by s. So, for instance, here we will return 2 times 4, uh, 2 times uh, m, which is known, divided by s, which is 4. Okay? That is the estimate that we will return here. Okay? Seems natural, right? But is this, a, is this a good thing to do? Unfortunately, not. And uh, it's not very hard to see why. Uh, so imagine this particular setting. Right? So in this particular setting, we have only the elements from one to n minus one, let's say. Okay, and uh, the first, the whole lot of the array, the the whole lot of the of the of the input sequence. In fact, m minus n, m minus n plus one of the of the stream positions is really one element, one the same element, 
occurring multiple times. And then you get n minus 1 distinct elements or rather n minus 2 distinct elements here. Okay? So, that, so now supposing if m is much bigger than n, supposing m equal to let us say n square. Okay? So, in that case uh, and supposing s is like uh, s is like I do not know n. So, if we sample n positions out of n square right, with very very high probability you will only get the, the elements here right? and therefore, you will return your, your estimate n hat will be equal to 1 with high probability. Okay? And so, it does not work. Okay? So, what do we do? And in fact, it does not work because uh, see what, what now happens is that if you are sampling only this uh, only this one particular element, you cannot distinguish between the two cases when we have uh, when we have uh, 1 1 1 1 1 when we have 1 1 1 1 1 and 2 3 4 n minus 1 or when we have 1 1 1 1 1 and then and then again more ones right. These two cases will return the same answer. Okay? So, therefore, this particular sampling algorithm cannot work. Okay? So, let us look at another simple algorithm. This would not be very efficient, this would not be the most efficient algorithm that, that will be uh, that we will see, but it will be fairly good. It is it is actually fairly useful for a lot of real settings and this is known as linear counting. So, what, what do we have? We have a bit array B of size m, again initialized to all zeros. We will choose m, the value of m later. We again have a hash function B, right, that maps from, uh, that maps from the universe to m. So, when seeing, a, when seeing an item x, right, we do not, I mean, we only do one simple thing. We go to the position that the hash function indicates, and then we set that bit to be one, right? So this should really be u. Okay. So okay. So what do we do when we are trying to estimate? So at the end, we look at the number of of non-zero entries. We look at So, we look at z m to be the number of non zero entries of uh, so the number of zero entries right and then we return an estimate like this minus of m log of z m by m. Okay. So, why does this make sense? Let us try to do the analysis. So, we return this as our estimate n hat. Okay, fair enough. Uh, why does this make sense? Let us try to analyze. So, so, just as a sanity check, uh, see that it is returning at least, uh, uh, I mean at least a um, positive number, right? because uh, the, the z m by m is a fraction and therefore, uh, the log of that is a negative number. So, it is returning at least something that is a positive number. Okay? Fair enough, let us see. Uh, so, to see why that makes sense, uh, let us look at the, uh, I mean again the probability that a particular position remains at 0. We have looked at such a uh, such a probability when analyzing the Bloom filters, right? And it's very similar analysis that because we have done n insertions, the probability that particular bit position, a particular bit position, remains zero is again the probability that all the insertions went to other m minus one bit positions, and the probability of that is one minus one by m to the power n, right? And this let's approximate by e to the power minus n by m. Okay. So, therefore, that the expected number of positions that are still at 0. So, remember that z m is the number of positions that we are counting at 0. What is the expectation of z m? 
So, the expectation of Zm is m e to the minus n by m, right? Because the probability that each of that a single one remains 0 is, is e to the power minus n by m. Therefore, the therefore and 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 and, and uh, so you define an indicator random variable and you just count the, the number of positions that are still at 0 and it turns out to be m e to the power minus n by m. So, therefore, we say that supposing we believe that Zm hat is close to its expectation. Therefore, Zm hat equals m e to the power minus n by m. Okay? And therefore, Zm hat by m ln of that equals minus n by m. And that gives you the estimate that n hat equals minus m ln Zm hat by m. Okay? And now you see how that mysterious formula came to be. So, this equality, why does it hold? This in order to see why this equality is justified, we have to go back to some of the tail inequalities that we have taught you. Okay? And we will not sort of do that analysis here because we will look at smarter algorithms, but it is not very hard to show that this is fairly concentrated. So, this is actually this typically gives you a nice estimate, although for that right, uh, you have to use the value of m to be some constant factor times n, which is the number of uh, elements that you are that you are looking to count. Okay? But this is often useful in practice, that is if you are not sort of interested in coding up some of the more complicated algorithms, this is a, a quick and dirty thing if you have a reasonable amount of, maybe not a whole lot memory, but a reasonable amount of memory at your disposal. So, here is a very fun algorithm, right? And this was uh, this has a very rich history. It was first developed by Martin uh, when he was actually dealing with uh, PDP computers, in which he literally had only kilobytes of memory, right? And then, uh, but he was an engineer and he couldn't really analyze it. And it was anal uh, analyzed by this uh, uh, this brilliant mathematician Philip Flagellet. Please look him up on Wikipedia if you can uh, to uh, to provide this. Uh, and, and, and further sort of improved uh, beyond what Martin was doing to provide this very excellent algorithm which is still in use. This is known as uh, the commonly known as the Flagellet Martin or the FM sketch. So, here is what we have. Again, the secret ingredient is a hash function. And here it is a hash function that maps every element of the universe to a bit string of size L. Okay? Here I have written it as, as, as 2 to the L, but think of it as a bit stream of size L, okay? a bit string of size L. Okay? So, initially let us just assume that h of x is completely random. Right? Although remember that we have talked about the fact that completely random hash functions are not practical because they cannot really be stored. So, you have to use something like a 2 universal or a k universal hash functions. And, uh, but it is just easier to do the analysis with uh, with the completely random hash function and then see how we can change it for k universal or for more realistic hash functions. So, here is what we need to define very mysterious quantity. We need to define given any bit string v. So, think of bit strings and integers as 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 as, as, as interchangeable uh, interchangeable quantities right. For any bit string v define 0, 0 of v 0 of v to be the position of the rightmost one so think of uh, so think of this position as zero index this is position 0 position 1 position 2 position 3 position 4 right so i say that 0 of 10110 is 1 because the rightmost one is at position 1 here the rightmost one is at position 0 1 2 3 uh, at position 3 right so, note that this also means that this is the maximum i such that 2 to the i divides the integer v, right? Because this quantity, I mean you have you have i minus 1 zeros here means that it is divisible by 2 to the i. Okay? So, so, here is the very simple algorithm. The algorithm just says that we choose a random hash function h that maps every element of u into a l length bit string. Okay? Then 
we keep a counter z right that is initially set to be 0. So, this is the initialization that is it. Now, you go you are going over all the elements of the stream right and at every element when you when you when you get the element x you call the function process of x. When you call process of x this is what happens right it just says that ok it counts the it, it, it calculates h of x then it says that ok let us look at the number of zeros uh, let us look let us calculate the zeros function in h of x which means that let us look at the position of the rightmost one. Is that bigger than the value stored in z? If that is so then you update z with this value that is it. So, basically z contains always contains the maximum position the maximum of the rightmost bit elements rightmost bits of the rightmost one bits ok. So, z contains the maximum rightmost position of 1 ok. So, when we are trying to estimate we take the uh, I, I mean at the end of the stream we are supposed to call the function estimate and we calculate 2 to the power z plus half and we just return that that is our that is our estimate ok. So, now so now what is happening why does this work let us before do the we do the analysis let us run through a simple a simple uh, example for that right. So, imagine that these are the, the these are the elements right. So, the color is the is a particular element id. So, here we have a stream of length 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 let us say we have a stream of length 12. We have uh, m equal to 12 and uh, the true n equal to 4 only 4 elements in here. So, first so first z is initialized to 0 ok. Now, we get the blue element right here zeros the function zeros return 0. So, so, so here z is, is still 0 right uh, sorry now first we get the red element first we get the red element and and and, and here zeros is uh, z is 1. So, therefore, we get so therefore, z is initialized to be 1 right then we get the blue right zeros is 0 therefore, z is the maximum of 1 and 0 therefore, it remains at 1 right. Then we get the red again does not matter remains at 1 are you noticing something 1 again it remains at 1. Do you notice that if the if, if an element appears the second time or the third time the, it does not change the value of z right that is a very important criteria of the statistic that we are keeping. Ah now we get the turquoise the turquoise blue uh, for this one z is 0 1 2. So, now z becomes 2 and once it is at 2 here it again remains at 2 again remains at 2 again remains at 2 remains at 2 again turquoise does not change remains at 2. Now, we are getting a new element, but that has z set to be that has 0 set to be 1 right because the rightmost 1 is at position 1. So, therefore, 2 does not change the statistic that we are keeping does not change and here it does not change. So, therefore, at the at the end of the stream we get z equal to 2 and therefore, we, re, we return an estimate 2 to the power 2 plus half which is something like 2 to the power 2.5. See this is not entirely accurate of course, because this problem was very simple, but this was just a dry run right and uh, and this is how this is as simple how simple the algorithm is. But now the major task behind us is to show that why is this is this correct ok. So, so how can we do that? So, so before we try to analyze why this is correct uh, let us look a little bit into the sp space usage of this algorithm ok. So, first of all uh, what we need to think about is how big do we need this bit stream this, this this string of bits to be right that is if you are mapping every element 
to a string of bits, how big does the string of bits should, how big should the string of bits should be? So using something known as a birthday paradox that you should definitely look up, you can, what you can say is that if the size of the, if the size of the, uh, if the number of, uh, if the size of the bit string is at least, let us say 3 log n, right, then with very high probability, every element, every element gets a unique bit string, that is, we do not get collisions, okay. And this happens with very high probability as long as the size of the string, the size of this bit string is, is bigger than 3 log n. Because in some sense, if the size of the bit string is bigger than 3 log n, then the number of such possible bit strings is, uh, is, is, like, uh, is like 2 to the power uh, 2 to the power 3 log n, which is n cube, right. So therefore, the number of possible, if you are mapping n things randomly into a universe of size n cube, number of collisions is uh, basically 0, right, with very high probability, okay. So, so then, but, but that means, what that means is that in order to store the bit string, you, you also need, uh, the algorithm needs to store C log n, right, because when it gets an element, it calculates the bit string for that. So, it needs C log n space. The only other space that it requires is this counter z that it is storing, right, ha, what is the size of that, right. See, the maximum value of z only needs to be 3 log n, right? Because remember what z is so storing. z is storing the position of the rightmost one. So, the position because the bit string, because the string is of length l, the position of the rightmost one also varies from 0 to l minus 1. So, therefore, z only needs to store values from 0 to l minus 1, which means that it needs to store values from 0 to 3 log n minus 1. So, therefore, the size of z only needs to be log base of 3 log n, right, which is let us say log log n. That is quite astonishing, right. We only need to store a counter of size log log n. So, therefore, the total space usage is really log n plus log log n, right, which is very interesting. But is it any good? We have developed an algorithm that uh, uses, uh, magically uses very less space, uh, but does it provide a good estimate and we do not know that, okay. So, what is the intuition? So, we will do the intuition in this, in this, in this uh, lecture and we will postpone the, uh, postpone the actual proof to, a, to the next lecture for this. So, the intuition for this is, is very simple. It is say, Suppose, assume that the hash values are uniformly distributed among these, uh, among these uh, 2 to the l possible bit strings. That is, for every, for every element, right, uh, it gets a uniform at random chosen ha a bit string out of this, out of this 2 to the l possible bit strings. So, because it is a uniform bit string, the probability for a fixed element, the probability that the bit string is divisible by 2 is half, right, because about half the bit streams, bit strings are divisible by 2, about one fourth of the bit strings are divisible by, uh, by 4, about 1 by 2 to the k of the bit strings are divisible by 2 to the k. So, what does it mean for a bit string to be divisible by 2 only? It means that, it means that it has, if a bit string is divisible only by 2, it means that it has somewhere it has 1 and then a 0, right. It has at least 1 0 at the end. If a bit string is divisible by 4, it is at least 2 zeros at the end. If a bit string is divisible by 2 to the k, it is at least k zeros at the end, okay. So, then see, then this means that the position of the right, this says something about the position of the rightmost one right we'll get to the uh, we'll get to i mean making this precise uh, in our next lecture and also if you if you take the if you take this 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 k to be something like uh, log base 2 of n plus 1 right the probability that 
a uniform chosen bit string is divisible by uh, is divisible by 2 to the k for this value of k is really 1 by 2 to the power log 2 base log base 2 of n plus 1 right which is really 1 by uh, uh, n square right log base 1 by sorry it is it is 1 by 2 n it is 1 by 2 n not not 1 by n square and that means that what you can say is that if we do not really expect any of them to be divisible by 2 to the log n plus 1 okay? because that probability gets to be really really small. So, therefore, what it will mean is that that by tracking what is the maximum i such that 2 to the i divides v we can hope to get some estimate of how many distinct numbers we have we have sort of input into our uh, into our stream of how many distinct numbers we have we have used in our stream okay so so let's so let's uh, sort of end now and uh, in next class we will uh, we will formalize this proof of the of the of the flagellar martin so so just to summarize in this class uh, we introduced the streaming model as a useful abstraction of, of of when you cannot store the entire data set into memory uh, we uh, we also got to the question of estimating basic statistics of our data. For instance, even the number of distinct counts, and we see that even that is fairly non-trivial. For instance, even sampling-based algorithms didn't really work. Simple sampling-based algorithms. We saw at least one algorithm that that does work: the linear counting that uses uh, order uh, that, however, uses order order n space, right? And now we saw another very sort of magic-like algorithm uh, by Flagler and Martin for which we have gotten the intuition, we have not gotten to the actual proof of that yet. That is what we will do in next class. Thank you.